Thank you for joining this webinar. We can see that there are many people who have joined it, and I'm sure some more will be coming on soon as well. I'm here with my colleagues at the International Re Renewable Energy Agency in Abu Dhabi. This webinar is hosted by IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency, and this webinar is for those applying for funding for renewable energy projects in developing countries through the IRENA Abu Dhabi Fund for Development Project Facility. So before we start, there are a few webinar tips that we've provided on this second slide. Uh, there are two options for listening in. You can listen through your computer and please select the mic and speakers radio button or you can listen by telephone. If you do have some technical difficulties, there's a telephone number provided, which is plus one triple eight two five nine three eight two six. And if you'd like to ask a question during the presentation and also during the Q&A, please uh, select the questions pane on your screen and type in your question. We will take questions at the end of the presentation. And of course, we will be recording this webinar and it will be made available on our website in the irena.org forward slash ADFD part of the website. It's the section called Helpful Resources. So in this presentation, we're going to first cover what the facility is, then accessing funding and eligibility criteria, the funding offer by the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, then the selection process, including how the projects are evaluated, and our process of applying, which is an online process. We'll then introduce you to two colleagues who will be introducing two tools for project uh, preparation to you, uh, one which is for project facilitation and the other which is for on-site appraisal. This will be followed by qu question and answer session. And so uh, we hope to get through this by within the next 20 minutes and then we'll open out to questions and answers for um, uh, the rest of the webinar. So what is the facility? Um, so I'm just going to explain exactly what this IRENA Abu Dhabi Fund for Development Project Facility is, how it all started. It's basically a collaboration between IRENA and Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, ADFD, and it was part of the UAE bid to headquarter IRENA in Abu Dhabi. And within that UAE bid, there was a 350 million commitment by the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development to projects recommended by IRENA in developing countries over seven annual funding cycles. So I'm going to briefly look through what the process is and also what the eligibility is here. Right now, the call for proposals, the sixth funding cycle of the seven that have been offered, is opening on, opened on the 16th of November 2017, and there's a deadline to receive summary proposals by the 15th of February 2018. We'll be explaining a little bit what the summary proposals need to contain a little bit later in the presentation. For now, we'd like to explain what entities, uh, what uh, government entities, uh, etc., what type of project proponents can apply. Projects must be from countries that are members of IRENA, signatories of the IRENA statute, or states in accession, and they must also be on the OECD DAC list of ODA recipients. The map next to on this slide also indicates those projects that are eligible. The eligible country list is downloadable online. It's an Excel file, and so you can keep that on hand as well for your reference. Projects should also be able to obtain a government guarantee, and we'll explain a little bit more about that later. Secondly, they need to be economically and financially feasible and have positive development impacts. The funding offer from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development is 
uh, of the 350 million, it, it's over seven annual cycles, so it's 50 million per year per cycle. Five to 15 million is provided for each project to cover up to 50% of the project costs, and this is for the actual implementation of projects, not for feasibility studies. So projects really need to be at feasibility study once uh, the ADFD um, has selected them in the process. The one there's a one to two percent loan rate, one percent loan rate for low income countries and two percent for the middle income countries as on the DAC list of ODA recipients. And the loan rate is for a 20 year loan period including five year grace period. So the type of funding uh, that has been provided as a result of this offer has been uh, uh, for example, $10 million for the Burkina Faso project, a 3.6 megawatt solar mini grid project, which was selected in the third funding cycle. And this is a picture that we did take from our on site appraisal together with the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development uh, in Burkina Faso. Overall, so far, in the four funding cycles that we've um, had projects selected, there's been 189 million allocated by the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, and 387 million has come in co-funding co from other sources, primarily from the from government sector, but also from development funds and include, including the Green Climate Fund. And this has been for 19 projects overall. So adding that up, that's uh, a mobilisation of funds of uh, 576 million. So the selection process in this sixth funding cycle is as in, in the previous cycles, the way the projects are recommended are through an independently selected panel of experts who technically evaluate the projects, an advisory committee who are appointed by the IRENA assembly who come in thereafter to provide a strategic recommendation on the projects based on geographic spread, technology diversity and alignment with government priorities. And then the ADFD makes the final selection of projects from the recommended list. The recommended list comes from the IRENA advisory committee to the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. And uh, just a, a quick brief of the process, as we mentioned, summary applications can be submitted by the 15th of February 2018. If the project is shortlisted, you would find out by early May and you would be asked uh, to provide a full project proposal online, which needs to include a full feasibility study as well as a government guarantee letter. And, and that needs to be provided by the end of June. And then the ADFD make the final selection of projects from IRENA's recommended list at the end of December in 2018 for the sixth cycle. And the applicant would be informed then. The evaluation criteria of the experts focuses on the overall technical feasibility of the project, three main areas. So economic, technical feasibility, economic and financial viability, as well as potential socioeconomic and environmental benefits. And here you'll get a summary of what's asked for at the summary stage, but these details on these three sections are explained further in the application form and also in an accompanying expert considerations file that indicates to you how each of the parts of your application are assessed by the experts which should help you in preparing the summary applications. Later on in the process, we will advise you on, on the full project proposal submission. Right now, we're focusing on the summary submission and for sake of transparency, give you an idea as well as, what will be, as to what will be asked at the full proposal stage. Uh, overall, the experts will also look at whether the projects are replicable or scalable and whether they improve 
energy access and address energy security. But fundamentally, they'll be looking at those three core aspects of technical merit, economic financial viability, and socioeconomic and environmental impacts. So the way the application works is that you need to go onto our new revamped website, um, which for the URL for irena.org forward slash ADFD, that's the best way to get to it. But if you do just go to irena.org, please just go up to our work, click on that, and you'll find a project facilitation and accessing funding from the IRENA ADFT project facility. And you'll get to this page that I have presented here. So the first thing applicants must do is that, that also there are a few quick links that will provide you with further details here. You can click into them and there are drop downs to provide further guidance. You can register here and log in. And when you uh, log in, you will get to a dashboard that provides you with an overview of the guidance documents. And you can download these guidance documents. And the timeline for applicants is further down the page. Please click on My Projects, and you'll, you'll find an online application form. And you need to click on Create Online Project, and you will see the form open up. Please fill in these four tabs. There's a coordinator information, um, basic project data, and the executive project summary. And the expert considerations file, you can also access here. There's a button just behind this uh, pop-up where if you click on it, you can see the file that I was referring to earlier that advises you on how to, uh, what points to consider because that's how your evaluation, your form will be evaluated. Now I'm going to uh, pass on to my colleagues uh, in Bonn, who will talk about uh, the tools and templates that Irina provides for project facilitation. Um, and, and then after that, to my colleague from Global Atlas on site appraisal services. And then we can open out to questions and answers on any part of this presentation. So uh, I'll pass on to my colleague in Bonn. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Siliha, for this uh, uh, presentation. I will now uh, provide uh, to the participant an overview of one of the tools ARENA provides to support applicants in the preparation of project proposal. So ARENA has developed Project Navigator, which is a platform providing comprehensive, easily accessible, and practical information, tools, and guidance to assist in the development of bankable renewable energy projects. The Project Navigator enables project stakeholders to avoid pitfalls that can jeopardize project success and helps them to reduce the gap between the development and the late stage activity like the financial closing through practical deployment mechanism. The platforms with the, is accessible uh, for free online, and with a single email registration, we provide project guidance for all major renewable energy technologies, including solar, wind, bioenergy, geothermal, hydro, and ocean technology. Those project guidance were prepared by ARINA uh, with the input of industry experts to understand how to develop a bankable renewable energy projects. We provide a variety of tools, financial models, project templates to strengthen your project proposal. All in all, you can also work online with our interactive workspace where you can apply certain tools like checklists to make sure that you are in the, in the correct way when you are working on your project. When, when you are looking at uh, um, identifying financing options for your project, uh, notably uh, the ARENA ADHD project facility requires co-financing, so Navigator provides a search engine to identify financing instruments relevant for your project, basically dependent on project technology and location. 
Next, uh, next slide, please. Um, so the, the Project Navigator provides practical support to project stakeholders to overcome challenges when looking at project development. If you can uh, uh, open the, the, the slides fully. Um, essentially for project developers, uh, the platform is designed to help understand how to prepare a bankable proposal. Uh, with regard to the application to the facility, we support uh, preparation of the executive project proposal and the full project proposal. And uh, a lot of tools available online are helps to look at, let's say, the five uh, criteria. Uh, that's the expert evaluator we look when uh, they are uh, uh, investigating your project. In our experience, bankable project proposals typically include a strong feasibility study showing high probability of success, a tailored financial model indicating adequate future cash flow, and a superior risk mitigation plan where mitigation measures are implemented and risks are allocated to appropriate parties. By putting best practice into action, IRENA regularly organizes training workshops based on ARENA Project Navigator, designed to support and help project propo uh, proponents to improve and apply best practices to transform their project to address the challenges of uh, affordable energy. Um, today we also have a, a webinar where we are going to give an overview on what a project proponent can find on the platform. Here you have an overview on the major let's say, tools you can use today, but uh, we really invite you and uh, to attend our next webinar where you will have a, a, a detailed overview on how to improve your project's proposal to submit it to the ARENA ADAB project facility. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon, for that. Um, I will also now pass on to our colleague here in Abu Dhabi who will talk about the Global Atlas Site Appraisal Service. So, uh, Abdul Malik. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Abdul Malik. Uh, thank you, Seleha, for uh, this opportunity. Um, and thank you, you know, the listeners for, you know, putting, you know, for the time uh, that you, you know, put out to listen to us. Uh, today I will be talking to you very briefly about uh, IRENA's new site appraisal service. It's one uh, we introduced six months ago. And uh, what we try to achieve exactly is to support, you know, developers, uh, especially when, you know, they are uh, from, you know, government agencies you know, to support developers in finding, you know, the best sites to, uh, to invest their monies on. Uh, how, do we, how do we render this service? Uh, we basically use, for solar and wind, we use high resolution uh, time series uh, developed from, for wind, for re uh, from reanalysis models, and for solar, from, uh, uh, from satellite-based uh, models to basically figure out what the generation, the long-term generation profile for a particular site would be. But we don't stop there because we know that uh, what makes a site, uh, what makes a site, you know, what makes a site good goes beyond just the resource. So we try to combine this information on the generation profile uh, with a basic financial modeling of the sites to establish the range of tariffs within which that site is feasible so that you as a developer can compare this range of tariffs with, uh, with a benchmark. So be it the, the uh, electricity price that you have, the supply price that you have signed in your, uh, in your power purchase agreements or the price of you know, neighboring projects if you are in a country, you're developing a project in a country where uh, there is a push to continue to develop cheaper electricity. So in summary, here is a, uh, I mean, in summary, what we do is, you know, we gather, you know, high resolution time series, run that through a financial model for you, 
and uh, through a power generation model, and then the re you know the results through the, the you know the power generation results through uh, through a financial model to establish if that site is feasible or not. It's a process that can be run very rapidly for several sites. It's a process that can be run very rapidly for several sites, uh, all with the aim of helping you select uh, the best sites when you have to select them from many, basically. So to, to, if you want to request for this service, uh, you need to contact or to contact us uh, through uh, Global Atlas services at irena.org, and we will uh, basically take the discussion further from there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abdul Malik and uh, Simon. And we're now in the Q&A part of uh, the session. Uh, I understand that uh, there have been some questions posed in the system. And uh, so I, I'll go one by one with some of the questions that have been uh, posed. Um, so I think some of them have been answered within the system as well. So uh, one person asked if the slides from this webinar will be made available to the participants. Yes, we'll be putting that also in the helpful resources part of arena.org forward slash ADFD part of the website. Uh, we also have questions about what phase of the project uh, need, what phase the project needs to be at. At the summary stage, it can be at free feasibility stage. So for the submission of projects in this part of the application process, you can submit uh, your uh, summary with your overall objectives for the project, uh, revenue sources, uh, business plan, and social, economic, and environmental benefits. And it's at the full proposal stage later on in the process that we would ask for a full feasibility study. So uh, the question from uh, uh, Tom Elliott was, does the phase of the project supported by the arena funding have to be at power uh, generation have to conclude with power generation. That's also a further question on the type of, of uh, project. Because this is a renewable energy project, it, and because as per the IRENA statute, that there needs to be uh, power generation uh, from the projects, but we have projects that have come through which are biomass stove projects um, as well. So they can be biomass uh, projects, but not necessarily power generation. However, just to clarify, the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development does prefer power generation projects and, and uh, um, middle-sized infrastructure type projects. I'm just going to answer um, several questions on the government guarantee uh, all together. Um, so I hope this helps to answer many of your questions. The government guarantee letter that the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development um, asks of the applicants um, is a, a template letter that you can provide, you can find online in the helpful resources part of the website. There are two downloadable templates there. And uh, you will um, find a template for government components that are submitting, and that has language in which a loan guarantee agreement needs to be signed with the government, and the loan agreement with the project proponent. Uh, sorry, that, that's for the, the non-government entity uh, applicants, that they have to sign a loan guarantee agreement with the government, uh, the Ministry of Finance does, and a loan agreement with the project proponent. In the case of government entities, they can sign a loan agreement, and that includes the guarantee for the loan. So in the case of non-government entities, there's slightly different wording in the template, and you can download that uh, online. So it can be com uh, commercial projects, but it needs to have the authorization of a government entity that's involved in the international borrowing affairs of the country that's willing to provide 
a government guarantee letter. <coughs> I'm just going to look uh, at some of the questions that, that they're, they're addressed. Okay. So um, there is a question about, um, uh, I think I'm just going to address a few other questions as well that we we've, we've think are important for you to, to know about. Co-financing is required by several different uh, entities. I'm going to answer, answer these broad ones and then this. Um, are, 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 um, uh, require, the, the, there's no specific requirement from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development on the co-financing. It could be from government entities or it could be from the private sector or from development funds. So up to 50% of the project finance can, is from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. So for example, in the Solomon Islands Hydro Project, 15 million was provided by the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development and the rest was from different sources, from government, from private, 86 million from the Green Climate Fund. So it, it's uh, all different sources, things that can come from co-finance. Uh, also, just to clarify the type of project uh, earlier, the uh, bioethanol projects are also eligible. We did have a separate question on that. Okay, so we have a question from uh, Flinzo Hassan, which is, is it possible to give us the tools for the feasibility study? Uh, the feasibility study requirements attachment is provided on the website for you to really have reference for at the full proposal stage. There's a, a one pager there on the website. I, I will at some point try to go live and show you the website for this um, and, and show you this particular file, as well as the templates for the government guarantees, so we can help to answer these questions better. Um, uh, this question, if the applicant is a government entity in partnership with a private company, is it eligible? I hope some of what I said earlier is clarified that. You can be in a, a partnership with government uh, as a private entity and apply. Note that post selection by the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, you would need to go through the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development's tendering and procurement requirements, which means that they may, and that would be for the consultant and the contractor. So private companies that are involved in submitting the project need to be mindful that the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development will apply an international uh, it would want, would want uh, to have a uh, tendering and procurement process which is as per international norms for the selection of the consultant and the contractor. Um, okay, there's a question for, uh, which is, is, the, is um, from, from Hadi Murano that our project is totally three million uh, US dollars, including the land costs. Is it eligible for funding? or should it be a minimum of five million US dollars? Uh, the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development is offering five million dollars for up to 50% of the project costs. So the minimum size of a project is 10 million dollars. Um, so that's, uh, a ch that would be, um, I would say, not possible in this case, but I would be uh, I would advise you to look at the sustainable energy marketplace of IRENA and you could register there for any size of project and try to seek funding through that platform um, and that doesn't have a, this um, uh, constraint of exact offer of um, a funding from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. Uh, if you'd like further details on that please do email us uh, me directly or adfd at irena.org uh, for further details in the marketplace. You've also said that, okay, sorry, uh, we, we'll move on to other questions, but if all your questions are not addressed here, we will try to address them uh, separately later if you, if you feel they haven't been addressed. We'll continue in the webinar for another uh, maybe 20 minutes or so with the rest of the questions. Um, there's a question uh, which is, will projects be selected by category of renewable energy type 
or we'll all be competing with, with each other within a given geographical location. Uh, the way the process is, you'll see is this two-step process of the committee coming in to uh, select uh, and, and shortlist projects as a, at a second stage. So the first stage is the experts evaluating the projects technically. And then the committee come in and they try to ensure the projects are not all in one country, but that they also have a, te a technology spread. So um, it's a two-step um, selection process in which uh, there is analysis of technical aspects, there are scored, and then there's a strategic selection of yes and no to ensure there's a broad geographic distribution and technology diversity uh, uh, within that. So I would say that um, because of the geographic aspect uh, being one of the main, uh, one of the three main concerns there, it depends at a qualitative level what the lineup of projects is. So, um, so it's both renewable entry type and geographic location, not one over the other necessarily. In Tanzania, um, we have another question which says, in Tanzania, government guarantees can all, only be provided to projects that are at least 50% state-owned. Does that mean private projects in Tanzania are ineligible or are there alternatives for these types of cases? According to the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, the government guarantee is their cornerstone uh, requirement. So. Um, in this case, the case that you're, you're saying in Tanzania, uh, yes, I mean, you would have to have a government guarantee. The alternative that I can suggest to you again is to go on the IRENA marketplace, which has other sources of funding aside from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, uh, because the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, not, um, we have a partnership with Abu Dhabi Fund for Development in this facility, but we're a broader platform engaging with lots of different funds, and uh, the vehicle for that is the marketplace. So again, um, uh, Steve Wasira, please do feel free to contact us directly, and we will put you in touch with our marketplace colleagues and introduce you to that more broader platform. This platform, the IRENA ADFT project facility, is primarily for government-driven projects because of, by virtue of a government guarantee requirement that needs to be the case, but it is really dependent on the country uh, because they may wish to provide a government guarantee to certain private sector projects, and it depends on what their, their respective jurisdictions and legal process is in that regard. Another question is about the process itself. At the moment, we have a summary stage, and there's a question saying, could you clarify if the full proposal is due in June or July? I see two different months on this presentation. Just to clarify, it's at the end of June that we ask for the full proposal. I think we put the July aspect because the experts are sent the proposals in early July. But it is on our um, uh, our radar that we'll amend this. It should be end of June. As these as these things proceed, um, we keep you in 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 touch with you to to ensure that we're giving you sufficient time to prepare your proposals, and you can communicate to us during the process on that. Uh, thank you, uh, Shamar Pajama, for that question. There is a question also about will IRENA provide, uh, I think what you mean is funding for the feasibility study. Uh, we, um, and the IRENA ADFD project facility, the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development provides funding for the actual implementation of the project. But as my, my colleagues um, uh, here were presenting, they do provide some technical assistance on the aspects that are needed for a feasibility study a submission and um, Simon from Navigator was talking about how their tool could assist in the development of a, a well put together feasibility study. 
In terms of funding for feasibility studies, we would advise, again, the marketplace, which you can go to to seek funding for any preparation studies, uh, socioeconomic studies, uh, and feasibility studies. Um, so there's um, a question about the uh, uh, left. There's some questions here that have been proposed, and and some of the participants um, have have um, um, left the the webinar. And what we'll do is we'll contact them later. But let's continue. Can multiple projects be bundled together for funding? So that's from uh, Swati Agarwal. That we have discussed this with the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. Multiple projects can be bundled together, uh, but they need to be quite sp uh, specific. Um, projects that are uh, and they needs to be outlined as such and with specific locations there I think we've addressed some of the additional questions on uh, projects that are uh, are biofuel projects uh, allowed to apply yes um, there are biofuel um, projects that have applied in previous cycles uh, there's no restriction on that and in the FAQs part of our website, this particular aspect is clarified further on uh, technology types. So you can see that bio, uh, biofuels and, and biomass and uh, bioenergy projects, what type of projects are eligible. Uh, can the same company apply multiple times for different projects under development? Yes, you can submit as many projects as you like into the system, and you'll see the system allows for that. Uh, the minimum there's a question on the minimum limit for funding that you can apply for. Uh, the minimum limit, as as clarified earlier, is five million dollars uh, from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, but that's to cover up to fifty percent of the project costs. So that's ten million dollars in total as a minimum project size. Uh, there's a question on is a bank guarantee applicable instead of a government guarantee no it has the government guarantee has to be from the entity involved in the international borrowing affairs of the country because this is a sovereign loan provided by the Abu Dhabi fund for development after the final there's a question saying after the final selection of the project could you outline what will be the due diligence process followed by Irina ADFD to ensure the project is constructed and commissioned and operated in line with your requirement of funding. After the Abu Dhabi, so just to answer that, that's a, um, a very important question. Irina, on our side, does the selection process, as you can see from uh, our diagram here. We are involved in in, a, in this, the administration of the selection process from submission of summaries by applicants to the full project proposal and then the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development select projects at the end of December each year. After that, the projects um, are um, in a bilateral arrangement with the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development and they enter into uh, agreement with the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development following an on-site appraisal. A loan agreement is then signed and there needs to be a ratification of a loan agreement. You'll see in the post in the ADFD requirements part of our website, if you click on the drop down there, menu there, that uh, you will see the post selection um, I'm just going to try to show it to you online here, um, and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Thank you. So if you go into ADFD requirements and click on project facility, you'll see a drop down, and this is all the requirements post selection. Um, and the, there's a loan offer letter of consent from the government and various other processes to loan disbursement. Uh, and so that gives you an uh, gives you a heads up of what is required post selection. What Irina does then uh, is to try to ensure uh, 
uh, that communications are uh, as smooth as possible between the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development and the project proponent, and that there's clarity of communications between the respective uh, the, the two bilateral parties. So it would be the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development and the project proponent uh, entering into a bilateral arrangement. Um, and as, as clarified earlier, there's a question about the mixture of sources to reach the total amount of co-financing. It can be various sources, as mentioned on the Solomon Islands Tina River Hydro Project. If you go online and click on the Green Climate Fund uh, website, you'll see that that has co-financing from the private sector, from uh, development funds, from uh, governments, and uh, 15 million from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. So there was no constraint uh, provided by the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development on that. The, can, can, there's a question saying, can you confirm the maximum size of the Abu Dhabi funding? Uh, yes, 15 million is the maximum size ADFD loan to cover up to 50% of the project costs. So in the case of the uh, Solomon Islands project, that's a $234 million project now. When it was originally su submitted, it was $190 million, uh, but uh, because of further developments, uh, the costs have increased, and the maximum that ADFD could provide to that was $15 million. So that's the, the largest. And again, as I said, it's up to 50%. That's why the total project cost can be any size. The minimum, though, because it's up to 50%, the minimum size of a project is 10 million, because that's the minimum offer from ADFD is 5 million. So 5 to 15 million is what ADFD offers. Uh, there's a question saying, can the project be related to the revitalization of an existing hydropower plant? Um, so it, the projects that Abu Dhabi Fund for Development uh, like to fund are uh, projects in which they are funding the renewable energy technology component of the project. So if it's a revitalization with aspects which are not to do with the uh, exact uh, technology itself, then there might be some questions from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. But we understand from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, they want to fund specific renewable energy technology uh, aspects of projects. So they wouldn't fund, f uh, for instance, uh, studies or um, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure that's perhaps not even directly re related that you're doing to revitalize perhaps this power plant. We don't, we don't, uh, we just um, know that they like to have projects that are at conceptual stage and then are, are the feasibility study stage. Um, so beyond that might be a bit of a challenge for them, especially because they want to oversee the tendering and procurement process for the contractors involved. Um, so, and they need to be involved in that early on. Um, there's a question again saying, I'm still confused by the optimum mix of requested funds from IRENA versus co-financing and other funding sources. The Abu Dhabi Fund for Development does not specify what the optimum mix of uh, co-funding is. Um, so uh, it's up to the project uh, what they'd like to put forward, but the project needs to be economically and financially viable. Um, and it needs to show that co-financing is in place and that there's a plan for co-financing in place. Um, for, uh, for instance, so the other examples aside from Solomon Islands is the Mali project in um, uh, it's a solar PV diesel mini grid project that was selected in the first cycle. The co-funding has come from another development fund, Badea, which is uh, focused in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, they provided the rest of the co-funding. So it doesn't necessarily. So uh, maybe your question is to do with the fact that this needs to be government supported and how much does has to come from government, it's really dependent on uh, the project proponent and the country in question. Uh, 
at the summary stage, how much of the government contact details must be submit, or can the full contact details be submitted in the middle phase of the process? I think the earlier you engage with appropriate government contacts, the better, because the government guarantee letter is essential to be submitted by the end of June. So that's why we ask for these government contact details right up front at the summary stage. Uh, but at this stage, you know, and we understand if um, you haven't had the government guarantee letter fully um, signed off, uh, please do put the contact of those that you are in touch with in government regarding it. There's a question on, can new technologies be partially funded for a case study? Uh, please note that uh, ADFD has been clear that they would only fund tried and tested technologies. Um, so uh, that's where there, we would uh, advise that you put forward projects that are uh, the type of projects that you see in the lineup of the 19 that were selected. Uh, there are solar, PV, diesel, mini-grid projects, small hydro projects that have a lot of community benefits because this is the development fund and its intention is to both um, help in the rollout of renewable energy but also that those renewable energy projects need to have significant uh, development impact as soon as possible. Um, so there's a question saying, uh, what exactly is the na nature of the government partnership required? Joint venture with government or government issues the license and investment? Uh, this is really up to the applicant, what the um, government partnership and approach and structure uh, is. So the fundamental requirement is that there needs to be a government guarantee letter, um, and and the government, the Ministry of Finance, in most cases, signs off a guarantee. But it's up to the applicant as to how they structure their project with the government. Uh, there's a question saying, if is exploration drilling for a geothermal project eligible for this funding? Oh. Uh, we um, have got clarification from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development that exploration stage means that the project is still at preparatory stage and not at the stage that it's ready for implementation and for power generation. And therefore, going forward, they're not, um, they're saying that they would not fund projects that are exploratory drilling stage. Uh, again, I would advise to go into the marketplace to try to look for that type of funding. And also, uh, please do email me directly on, uh, on any of these questions that we've tried to address here um, so that uh, we can provide you with uh, more details as well. Uh, there's, I think there's a, um, a few more minutes. I will cover a few more questions. Um, and then we'll round up. Is there? And also, of course, I just wanted to let you know that uh, there is. Um, I'll, I'll round up at the end. I'm just going to do a few more questions. <laughs> so, just continuing. Um, is exploration is the project with existing infrastructure but lacks working capital eligible for funding? The existing infrastructure is worth 14 million. You see, the is issue with this is that the project needs to go through the tendering and procurement process of the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development for the contracting. So it really needs to be at feasibility study stage. That's the phase that, that it needs to be at. Um, there are a few other questions that we'll try to uh, address. Uh, offline, if that's okay with you. There's just one final question I think I should address, which is, does co-financing need to be in place pre-final submission? 
I think this is an important question. The Abu Dhabi Fund for Development would like to have co-financing in place as much as possible. What we try to do in our outreach for this webinar is really to uh, e email and contact people who uh, would uh, be in involved with government-driven projects. And those that uh, are supported by other regional or bilateral development funds uh, that that would be we we can understand from experience with the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. It's very much welcomed if um, these other uh, regional development funds or bilateral development funds are involved in the project. Uh, largely uh, because the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development post selection, you'll find that they have certain requirements, but it's not a detailed monitoring and evaluation process that you would have to abide by with other development funds. And so what ADFD take, has um, confidence in when they look at the projects is when other development funds are involved because they know that, uh, that there would be a proper follow-up uh, of the project as, as well from their development partners. Uh, so I would say in answer to does co-financing need to be in place pre-final submission as close to, uh, to possible uh, uh, to close as possible that would be um, uh, very welcome by the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development but in terms of um, uh, the stage because it's a feasibility study stage we do understand if it's not uh, fully signed off as, as yet uh, on the co-financing part. So I'll just finally round up. As a reminder, the deadline for the project, which you'll find on the website if you go into access funding, the deadline is right up front. It is 15th February 2018, and that's 5 p.m. Abu Dhabi time. If you have any questions about the application process that we have not addressed in this webinar, please do email us at adfd at irena.org and we will try to endeavor to assist you as soon as possible with them. We'd appreciate you filling out a simple poll that comes up after the webinar and we invite you to provide us with additional feedback by email as well. Thank you for listening. And the, the poll is right here. The quick poll is on the um, presentation right now. So please do uh, continue to fill it. Thank you for filling in the poll. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Abdul Malik. Uh, thank you for your active participation and all your questions. Uh, please do uh, feel free to engage with us uh, separately as well. Thank you for listening.